courses. And where I was at, I was putting the feed bins on the gates where they were fed. And I see this, what looked like You know, this was not, you know, a, a big, this was somebody who had a slight build, was smaller. Mm-hmm. Yep, I got you know, the impression of. You know, Liz, let me, let me jump in here real quick because you cut out just as you were about to describe what you saw. So if you can just say that again what you saw when you were out there uh, putting the feed bags up, I think it'll be better to uh, explain what you're talking about. Okay. Um, As I was doing that, I saw... I I got the impression of, you know, slight build, smaller in stature. And I say hoodie and cargo pants because it is black, loose fitting. You know, this is not something that I definitely saw a hoodie and cargo pants. It was just that type of fit in what the clothing was. Um, It was black. And this person was walking in the space between my house and my well house. Like they had come down the driveway through the front yard and was walking across to the side of the yard. I honestly thought it was probably the neighbor kid coming to pick up a basketball or something that my son had told him to to come and get. So I finished putting the feed bins on the gate, walked to where this kid should have been and there's no one there I had kept my eyes on the area where this person had walked through and they did not walk back out but there was no one there there were no footprints or it was muddy in the area go ahead So, so in other words, you saw this uh, young child or an entity walk to a spot where you knew it had to come out and it didn't come out. Right. Right. I saw it walk in the space between the house and the well house. And there was no other way to get back out except walk back through that same area. Did it, did it look very solid to you? Did it move in a normal fashion? Anything unusual about the way it moved or looked? I, I thought it was the neighbor kid who had come up to pick something up that my son had told him to get. Okay, so it just looked like a normal kid. Yeah. <laughs> Well, and I me, still have no explanation for that one either. And and when you uh, when you saw that apparition or that kid, uh, did it see you? It never turned and looked at me. It it looked like someone who was focused on a certain thing and was walking to that thing to get it or you know go to a certain area. They never turned their head, they never looked away, they were just focused straight ahead in the direction they were walking. And the idea of a hoodie and or loose fitting pants, uh, could you maybe translate that into some kind of a robe and or hood? Or was this definitely a modern day hoodie? Oh, it, it could have been any type of jacket or anything with a hood and pants that were loose fitting. I mean, it's just, I say hoodie and 
and cargo pants because that's the general appearance that it had. Wow. Well, I think that's a fascinating story, and that's not that long ago. No. Has anything happened on that property since then? I've had doors open and close. There's been shadows peek around the door frame into the room. I have a shepherd's lantern that will um, start randomly swinging in a circular motion for no apparent reason. A refrigerator door opens and closes. Yeah. (laughs) Oh, Mary. I think you opened the Pandora's box here with Liz. Keep going. <laughs> yeah. I, and the Liz, how does it make you feel? Does it make you feel um, uncomfortable or afraid, or do you feel like it's it's like a non-threatening entity? I, to me, it's non-threatening. I mean, it's just, it's here, but it it doesn't do anything. It doesn't harm anyone. It doesn't. You know, it doesn't break things. It doesn't scratch or cause any injuries. So, you know, I'm as long as it doesn't bother me, I'm not going to bother it. If it wants to look in my refrigerator, if it wants to open doors and close them, I'm okay with that. You know. So, so you're actually having some kind of a ghost or apparition open the refrigerator. Now, that's a hard thing to do. I and I thought I was crazy the first time I heard it but the most recent time it happened I was in the living room and the dog was beside me and he was awake for a change and I hear the refrigerator door open and he turns his head and looks toward the kitchen he heard it too boy and then I heard the door close I was like oh okay so I'm not losing my mind. That's that's good to know. Well, I think the dog would definitely know when someone opened the refrigerator door. That's dog. That's what dogs <laughs> do, right? Because they're expecting some kind of a treat. Now, it is interesting, though. The dog didn't get up and go try to check it out. The dog just stayed there with you? Uh, he did. Yeah, they... I think part of it, enough stuff happens that it's just kind of like, oh, okay, you know, this again. And they don't really, they're obviously not upset by it. Interesting. Yeah. Well, i tell you what, um, Liz and Mary, we are now going to turn to a subject that both of you are very fond of, I believe. Uh, Liz is also... A jewelry, a jewelry creator, and that is right up your neck of the woods here, Mary. Oh yeah. You want to ask Liz about uh, what kind of jewelry that she creates with some of these fascinating stones that I'm looking at at her website? Oh yeah, <laughs> just um, why don't you describe the the kind of jewelry that you do, and maybe a little bit about the technique that you use. I I do a little bit of everything. Um, most of what is on my website are pendants that I do wire wrapping on. Uh, some are natural crystals. Others are stones that I have cut and polished. Um, I try to keep the general shape of the stone as natural as I can. Like the edges will be irregular and rough, but then a very polished surface. Um, I, I also make, um, beaded earrings, like with seed beads and, and more intricate designs in them sometimes. And so the the stones that you use, do you, um, choose them just for the color and the beauty or do you also pay attention to the energetic properties, um, present in in all natural minerals? I choose them based on the color and 
the individual stone and how well it will work for what I want to do in that particular piece. Um, but I use a huge variety of stones too. So, you know, there's, I, I have stones that cover just about everything. And I'm, I'm looking at them right now on uh, your Facebook page and website. Most of them are either about the size of a quarter or even a little bit bigger, some of these beautiful pendants uh, with the uh, gorgeous. Is that, is that uh, copper or gold wire that you use to, uh, to uh, wire around them so you can hang them on a, a pendant? Uh, some are sterling silver and some are copper. I use both. Copper is uh, a little bit harder to find in jewelry. It's it's great that you're using that metal. It's a great metal, and and like I say, it's um, it's difficult to find copper jewelry. I I love using the copper. I, that is, I just love the color with the stones. But a lot of people do prefer the sterling silver, so I also use it. Mm-hmm. Can, can we say the, the website that we can find those on? Uh, sure. I mean, it's it's my personal website. It's lizreaderbooks.com. And you can go there uh, right now and just uh, scroll down to all these beautiful stones. Where do you get your stones, Liz? Uh. I have a lot of different places that I get them. Um, some of them I even are local stones that I have polished. Others I have get through um, specific suppliers. Like if I'm buying the citrine, the quartz crystals, and the amethyst crystals, I have one supplier that I go to, and he's, he's it. That's who I buy them from. Um, a lot of the others, I find some of the best specimens at things like flea markets where, you know, someone will have a booth where they, they were a collector or something and, or just have a fascination with rocks that they've picked up here or there and, and have found some amazing uh, pieces that I can work with and cut and polish and they're great. Well, that's good. So you're repurposing as well. Oh, absolutely. Okay. Yeah, I just I just found the site and um, let's see. Guess it'd be under shop. Yes. Okay. And if you'll notice on there, um, Mary, she has some amazing beadwork on some of these uh, earrings there. Tell us about those, Liz. That is something I started doing when I was still in grade school. Um, I, I don't even remember how I got into it, but I think my mother got a kit of some kind and asked me if I wanted to try them. And it went from there and... I I have hundreds of designs that I've set and drawn out and and come up with to to make some of those. Yeah, some of those are really intricate. It's funny. I did the same thing. I was in junior high school and I got really interested in these, and I I was just doing everything I could with them. I never got to this agree of in, uh, intricacy, but I, I kind of got that bug early on myself, and I, I still, um, well, just recently picked up jewelry making a little bit, uh, recently, again, but, um, just, uh, with not any metal working or anything, it's, it's fun, and it's a great way to, sure, create, but these are really nice. Well, Liz, I'm 
I'm noticing that there are some beautiful, intricate designs that you've got here on many of these 